Hello, welcome to video 13, Excel reports and presentation tips. In making Excel reports, I recommend that you always have a master sheet or an almighty sheet as I love to call it. It's a sheet that will have all the data you will ever need in one place. It will usually be a huge sheet and always updated. Then you will use it to feed the real reports you are expected to make or you want to send out. My second job was working as an MIS analyst for Conviva, making revenue reports and endless ad hoc reports for 10 countries. So I had a huge master sheet which I fed with the raw data the tech team generated for me daily. I made all the basic required analyses and fed that sheet with all the raw data I had. It made my job extremely easy and almost turned me into a magician because it enabled me to make complex ad hoc reports in seconds. Why? I already had a sheet that had all the data. All I needed was just linking, using formulas to link data from that master sheet into the ad hoc report sheets. Next, if you know that the data from your reports will ultimately be fed into another report, you know, copied into another report or analysis sheet, then it is best to remove all formulas before sending it out. When data with embedded formulas are copied, what happens when you paste in another sheet is the output might be very different from what you actually copied. Here is an example. Here I have numbers and then I have the total. So let's do the total again. We'll do some of these numbers. Then I close the brackets, enter. So let's say I needed to use this number somewhere else. And as usual, I copied. You can right click and click on copy. Then if I paste, you can see what's happening. Instead of pasting 90, it has pasted zero. This is a common issue you will encounter when you copy data with embedded formulas into another sheet or into another part of your sheet. You always end up with values that are different from what you originally copied. And next is, if you want to prevent people from changing some cell entries in your reports, all you have to do is just lock those cells. This might be useful when you send out Excel forms to be filled and you don't want people to change some particular parts of that Excel forms. You don't want the sheets to be totally made unusable for you. So how do you do that? It's very easy. You select all your cells, which is you click, let's do that again. You click a blank cell and you do control A. So it's advised you do it twice. That way if, you're, if the entire cell wasn't selected, when you do it the second time, everything will be selected. And then you right click, you go to format cells. Then you go to the last tab protection. And you notice that this will always be ticked. So you will untick it and you do OK. Then you will go to the cells you don't want them to edit. The cells you don't want them to be able to do anything about. So I'm going to let's start with this. I'll right click on that cell. I'll go once again to format cell. I'll go to protection. This time around, I'll tick the lock. Let's do that for this entire cell too. I'll right click. And let me do for the whole cell. Here. So I'll right click. I'll go to format cells. Once again, I'll lock those cells. Okay. You're not going to notice any difference now. I can still make changes, so it's not yet locked. When it will be locked is when I go to review. Then I'll click on protect sheets. So if you want to use a password, if you're really serious about locking it, you don't want anyone to unprotect the sheets, so you put a password. Just make sure that you remember the password. So in this case, it's for demonstration, I don't need to put a password. So I'll click on OK. So it's locked. I can make changes on other places. I could change this from C, add one more E to make it C. But if I try to do that here, I'm going to get an error. 
it's been locked if i try to touch here i'll get an error the cell or chart that you are trying to change is protected and therefore read only so i can't i have to it's telling me i have to unprotect it so that's how you lock parts of an excel sheet you don't want people touching and when it's, it's come back to you you want to make some changes there all you need to do is just click on protect sheet so now i can touch adjust this so that is done next is hide rows and columns that you don't want people to see this works great for not too sensitive data but if the data in those rows are very confidential best is to make a copy of the sheet and delete those rows and columns before sending out so let's do an example i'm going to hide this row so I'll highlight the rows I want to hide, I'll right click and then I'll see the option to hide. So I'll click on hide. So how do I unhide? I'll go to the cell, if you notice you see 34, 39. So I'll start from the cell, the row before the hiding and then I'll go one more row after the hiding and I'll right click and I'll click on unhide. So that's how you unhide. Same thing for hiding columns. You know, select the row columns you want to hide. Hide. When you want to unhide, select the column before the hiding, the column after the hiding, and unhide. So that is that. Next is when sending Excel reports, paste the most important table or charts in the body of the email. So if people view your email on their phones, they will be able to see the very important data and visualization. It's very good. So they don't have to go install an Excel app on their phone. Or even when they get the mail, they don't have to open your attached file to see the data you've sent them. They'll be able to see the very important things you want them to see right from the body of the mail. And finally, when making business cases or presentations in PowerPoint, it's best to include your source Excel files of the charts or analysis you did in the body of the slides. I'm going to show you an example. Here is a training slide. I use this a lot for my trainings. So I'm going to go to okay. Like here I go up. So here I'm showing a slide of how to make this this chart so instead of me having to send you know, the participants this powerpoint and then also set an extra file the excel, the excel file that has this chart so they could redo it you know they could follow along with my steps what i did is i attached the file this is that file into this excel slide so all what I send out is this PowerPoint and once they get this PowerPoint, they see the, the Excel file. All they need to do is just double click and the Excel file opens. So how do you do that? So I'm going to open the PowerPoint again and um, I'm going to try to attach a file here, an Excel file here. To do that, I'll go to Insert. And this is we are now in PowerPoint. I'll go to Object. You can see I can insert a whole different type of object. I can insert a PDF document. I can insert Excel file. In this case, I want to attach a file I already have. So I'll go to Create from File. Then I'll go to Browse. So I'll go select any Excel file. I'm going to go to Documents. And okay, let's say I want to insert this if practice, if formula practice file. So I'm going to select it. I'll copy this name. I'm going to need it later on. So I'll click on OK. So I like displaying the file as an icon. It makes it looks better. 
So I'll select display as icon. Then I like to rename the Excel. This is what Excel always, this is what you the default you will always get. So that's why I copied that file name because I want to change this. So I'm going to click on change icon. Then all what I want to change is the name. So I'll paste that name I copied before. Paste it. I'll click on OK. So once I'm done, I like the way it looks. I'll click on OK. And that is it. Excel creates the file for me as an icon and reshape it, enlarge it, and I drag it to where I want it to be in the PowerPoint. That's how it is. So I can double click on it to open it. And this is the file. I send you that PPT, you will get this file. I don't need to send this file as an accompanying document with the PPT. It's already there in the PPT. It's part of the PowerPoint. So that's how you attach an Excel file in PowerPoint. And that is it for this video. The next video is on Excel macros, VBA. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to our blog. Thank you.